a Jimmy Swigert Evangelistic Association Bible, a Jimmy Swigert Bible. Hi, I'm Steve Walter, pastor of New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. This is one done in the 70s. He's since come out with a newer one called the Expositor's Bible, which may be another review in the future. We'll see. But I'm going to tell you, this Bible is a great Bible. Now, I don't want to agree with everything Jimmy Swigert says or has said. As a matter of fact, he has come out against oneness. I find it interesting. He came out against oneness and then he fell. So maybe there is a correlation there. A lot of people come out against oneness and they don't at least publicly fall. But we'll see what happens there. Um, genuine leather. This was printed by Thomas Nelson. Now, this is one of those rare things like a, you know, what is it, a white rhino or something like that. One of these rare animals because Nelson, for very few times in their history, they did their Crown Imperial Reference Series in a large print. Man, I wish they still print. When they would do that, we would have people come out of the woodworks to buy this thing. Because, you know, you have giant print Bibles, but this is a large print. But so deep, dark print, the white pages, no ghosting, with a great referencing system. You can see just almost no clutter in the referencing system, unlike so many other center column references. Almost no clutter. And the size, I think this was like a poor man's long primer for a lot of people. Because the size is just perfect. We'll do some comparisons here. You can see my text only. Cambridge is a, a little thicker. This one's a little thinner and wider. I think I've got it upside down, sorry. And uh, this came in genuine leather with two ribbon markers. And I'm going to tell you, in the 70s, throughout the, uh, till the last part of the 80s, Nelson had a genuine leather that was out of this world. It was probably just American cow, genuine leather. And uh, so that's the first wonderful thing about this Bible, is it is the Nelson large print. That, in itself, is fantastic. And second, genuine leather came with dual ribbon markers. Didn't see that a lot, except in nice premium Bibles. Obviously, it's got the red. It's not the art gilt pages. Now, here's what I really like about this. Like, he's very conservative in his theology. Like, you'd have an overview of the books of the Bible, like many commentaries. Genesis, Exodus, and then Pharaoh's hardened heart. He goes into a deal about that. Capital punishment. What does the Bible say about capital punishment? Numbers, Deuteronomy. See, again, so this is a Bible study guide. So he's going through Joshua, 1 Kings, I Shall Not Want, Psalms 23, 2 Chronicles, Puzzling Questions of Life. Skipping a few pages here. Isaiah gives you a place for notes. Can Satan read your mind? Now that's kind of an interesting question. I actually get asked that a lot. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel. So, what about the heathen? I do not understand. So it's a very practical guide. The Lord's Prayer the cause of unanswered prayer and then it goes into Mark you know so it's interspersed with little commentaries on the Bible the sick sin of homosexuality look at that you think they'd come out with the Bible with that in it today <laughs> the sick sin of homosexuality you tell this was in the 70's and uh Turn back here, excuse me. The course of nature. That's what I was trying to get to. John, there's 
that sick sin of homosexuality again. Uh, confession, what is that? Jerusalem, the millennial reign, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, the future pl of planet Earth. So you can see, I mean, there's just a lot here. Now, to be such a great Bible in size, he put a lot in here. The principle of death and resurrection. And so then, he's got a little thing, how to study the Bible. Personal Bible study. And it's really good. Family Bible study. America. Get back or start family Bible study. You'll be blessed. Get your living, get the the television out of your living room and get your family Bible and have Bible study. Your life will be blessed. Sure, Satan's gonna fight you because you're going against him. So prophecies of the Messiah fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Little uh, daily reading guide. The parables of Jesus the Lord. I mean, see, I'm thinking this is a reader's companion to the Bible here. Is that right? Oh, no. The scarlet thread of redemption. Now, that's a great thing right there. I know uh, Wally Crystal, W.A. Crystal, used to, that was one of his sugar sticks. The scarlet thread of redemption. Go from Genesis, old forward, Rahab, scarlet thread out there. The parables of Jesus. A guide for Christian workers. I think I'm skipping pages. I am. Which, that, there used to be called the Christian Worker Study Bible by Nelson. And that was a study Bible in and of itself. It's a guide to Christian workers. Teachings and illustrations of Jesus, my subject, always very helpful. An outline and history of the twelve apostles, all the prayers of the Bible. So interesting and unusual facts of the Bible. Now, I'm sorry, I just really always enjoy these things. Uh, The Bible was divided into chapters by Stephen Langton about 1228. The Old Testament was divided into verses by R. Nathan in 1448. The New Testament by Robert Stephanus, 1551. The entire Bible divided into chapters and verses first appeared in the Geneva Bible of 1560. Um, it's got middle chapter, all this kind of stuff. In the Old Testament, there's 592,439 words. New Testament, 181,253 words. Longest word in the Bible is Meher Shalal Hashbaz, son of Isaiah, Isaiah 8 1. Words occurring only once in the Bible, Nat, so it wasn't written in South Georgia. Grandmother, Reverend, Eternity, and occurs 35,543 times in the Bible, excuse me, in the Old Testament, 10,684 times in the New Testament. Father, fathers, fathers occurs 1,500 times. Mother, mother, mothers occurs 325 times. Boy and boys occurs three times. God occurs 4,379 times. Lord, 7,738 times. See, and I like this stuff. Letters. There's 2,728,100,000 letters in the Old Testament. 838,380 letters in the New Testament. Unusual things in the Bible. So, it's even got a little good history of what happened between the Testaments. What is the Apocrypha? A chronology of the Bible. And that's before you get into a reader's guide to the King James. Jesus, man for all times. Wow. And then, the book, the Bible, the book for all time. Questions about God and man. Life and Bible times. Which that's, you know, that's a great thing to know. And then, 
you get to uh, the Bible itself, which is fantastic. In size, in print size, everything. Look, I mean, look at that center reference. Just a machine right there. Just fantastic center column reference. So that's the reason when Nelson would come out of these, come out with these, when people that were in the know, they would just come and say, "This is my Bible." Because again, it's kind of like a poor man's uh, long primer. So if you can find one of these. It's just great. And just tons of stuff at the back. Great concordance, a harmony of the Gospels. And then the standard... Uh, yeah, it's a fairly good, good print size in the concordance, but it's not huge. And then just the standard maps. Got the gold edging. Because this was meant, you know, two ribbon markers... Meant to be a premium Bible, genuine leather. It's held up well. And uh, if you can find this edition, it's a great ton of stuff in there. If uh, if you can just find that Nelson large print, trust me, I look for them. And they are rare things. So kind of got something with the best of both worlds. Didn't cost an arm and a leg. Genuine leather Bible. Back in a day when they were printing Bibles amazingly. And uh, God bless you. Talk with you later.